G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing our series ranking previous drafts of years gone by. And today we're going to go back 10 years, it doesn't feel like that long ago, to the 2013 draft. I remember this is my first year at uni, I was 19 years old, and wow, time flies. So we're going to do the usual format, I'm going to open up Tier Maker, we're going to get the five categories out and rank players based on how good I think they are. This one is obviously interesting, we've still got players in the twilight of their career, well not twilight of their career, how old are they now? They must be about 28, so I suppose by most metrics that's in the twilight of their career, but still um, very, very good players still contributing at AFL level, but we've seen enough to make some calls on some of these players. So you've been keeping up with the series, I have previously done 2018, I think I've done 17, 2016 as well. And and I have just recorded 2008, so that's either gonna come out before or after this video. Haven't decided yet. I'm pre-recording a lot of these videos because I've got some travel coming up and uh, I'm likely to be in bloody Canada or Scotland or London by the time you see this. But regardless, if you're interested in this series, there is a whole other host of content, um, both coming and uh, that I've already made on the channel. This one was a particularly tough one to rate. In the top 20, we had a number of players had their careers ruined by injury. Um, so it's a little bit hard to grade players like that. We had some absolute top end talent and then some gems later in the draft as well. If you don't recall, uh, the, the way I've done this video is that the top 20 selections make their way into the video by default. They're going to get graded one way or another. And then I've gone and handpicked five to 10 of the some of the better players later in the draft as well. Before we crack in properly, do remember that we are sponsored by manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs. You can get 20% off and free shipping simply by using that code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. Like I said, 20% off and on free shipping on products such as the Lawn Mower 4.0, best body hair trimmer out there. I use it myself. It's got a 90 minute battery runtime. It's got a ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. It's waterproof. They got products for your nose hair and your ear hair as well, which I know is a big problem for a lot of men. And then, you know, other things to round out your routine as well, such as moisturizers, deodorants, colognes, all that good stuff. So do yourselves a favor, check out the website. And if you grab something, use the code TRUEFOOTY20. So like I mentioned, we are back on tier maker and I've got the same five tiers that I've generally been running with um, for the entire series here. We've got top tier, genuine gun, good, decent and average. And uh, like I start with every video, I'm gonna go through and select one player for each category. So we have our parameters and it makes it easier to rank other players. What I did in the last video that I recorded was put up the, the rankings in order and then I made a few changes as well because it's a little bit hard until you have all the players there, then you can move players around. So we'll probably do that in this video too. So um, let's just straight off the bat, I'm gonna put two players in top tier because uh, there's no point being around the bush. Uh, Marcus Bontempelli and Patrick Cripps. Uh, there. Unfortunately, I've decapitated a lot of players in here, um, so I'm going to have to really rely on memory as to who they are. But Bont and Cripps, two of the best players in the competition. Cripps is the reigning Brownlow medalist. Bont and Pelly is a shout this year and uh, obviously a premiership player as well. And I think Bont and Pelly is very close to being the best player in the game. He's the best player in this draft, in my opinion. In terms of average, a lot of these, it's got, uh, these players are going to be players that didn't really ever crack games, or if they did, they didn't really make an impact. And the first player that I've spotted is Michael Apness. I think that's how you say it, Apness. A penis. Sort of a ruck four that Fremantle really leapt on in this draft and uh, that didn't come to fruition unfortunately for them. Uh, big whoop. So we've got top tier, we've got average and let's see who else we can use to fill in the middle parts. Who have we got here? Dom Sheed, I'm gonna say is a good player without it being a genuine gun. He can be maligned a little bit at times, but who isn't getting maligned at West Coast right now? Um, obviously a premiership hero with that goal, but never really ascended to being a genuine gun. He's just a good, solid, dependable player. Has his bad days, has some really good days. That's about right. Cam McCarthy, God, he can go straight to decent. Um, he played 70 games, otherwise I'd put him in average because uh, I'm not a huge fan of Cam McCarthy. But 70 games. By default, I think if you notch up 70 games, you, you can't be considered in the bottom tier, um, but he wasn't a very, very good player. Genuine gun, I'm gonna give it to Alex Pierce, actually. He, uh, at his best, he's a very, very gun key defender. Um, and the, the, honestly, the reason he, he hasn't got more of a profile is because he kept doing injuries and he was made of glass there for a little while. But you know, he's only 28. He he's, looks like he's been around forever. He's got horrible hair. But uh, yeah, I'd say he's a genuine gun. Who else we got here? We can probably fill in some of the bottom parts. Darcy Lang. Uh, did he end up going to Geelong? I think he did. But yeah, for a first round pick, uh, not great. Uh, would, would he qualify for average or decent though? Let's have a look how many games he played. He played 64 games, so by default I have to put him in decent. Okay, apologies Darcy Lang, I do not remember you playing 64 games. Zach Jones is a good player, um, you know, obviously played at Sydney and then is now at St Kilda and is just, you know, a reliable 
sort of player, a really contested player, a little bit erratic, turn the ball over a little bit, but at the very least, certainly a good player, but I don't think he's ever good enough to be genuine gun. Christian Salem is though, uh, and he was pick nine in this draft as well, a uh, premiership player at the Melbourne Footy Club, and uh, on his day is one of the more damaging outlets out of the back half. So yeah, genuine gun, I'd say Salem. This bloke here is Jack Leslie, I think. I've cut off his head, but he was picked 20, I want to say, in this year's draft uh, as a ruckman, and I don't recall a single thing about him. I'm not even going to look up how many games he played. Uh, I'm pretty sure he would qualify for average. Orazio Fantasia is good. A little bit overhyped, let's be honest. Like, if it weren't for BT saying his name stupidly, I don't honestly think Orazio Fantasia has been, you know, a genuine gun. I think he's a good player. Mick Stay is also good. Apologies, Collingwood fans. I've still got him in his Brisbane Lions jumper there, but I couldn't find too many uh, Collingwood photos, funnily enough. I didn't look that hard, but it doesn't matter. Dan McStay is a good player, uh, obviously on a big contract at Collingwood at the moment, but that's probably more out of the position he plays, and he's a decent, good player. Well, he's a good player. Let's let's use the correct terminology. He's a good, solid player. Zach Merritt's a top liner, I think. Um, he is a wonderfully prolific and consistent midfielder for Essendon. Really damaging on his day. Uh, he is not on the Bontor Crips level. Let, let me make that clear. But um, again, we're still kind of deciding what our barriers are, so that might change. James H is a good player. Started his career at the Brisbane Lions, didn't really get cracking, and then became a good role player at Collingwood as a sort of a wingman and did he play in the back line a little bit um, but he certainly played a, a, an outside role at Collingwood since he's been at Fremantle he's actually been a little bit understated you know some of the inside work has been good uh, I think he exceeds decent he's certainly a lot better than McCarthy Blake Akers by the same token I will put in there um, how long was he at Fremantle like two years was it it wasn't one year was it it was two years and uh, some of his best football was really good and I think he's been consistent at Carlton uh, or at least very solid so I think he's good certainly exceeds decent James Sicily, top liner, absolutely. Unbelievable player. Um, hugely prolific, rock solid down back. Was he drafted as a forward? I think he was. But nonetheless, yeah, don't need to really argue that point too much. I think he is a top tier player. This is Cade Kolajasny, this faceless player here, who I'm gonna put in decent. He was a very talented top five pick. A lot of injuries, did he? Forgive me if I can't remember this, but he had concussion issues, which is very sad if that's true. But uh, obviously ended his career at Melbourne. Um, yeah, I think a clear level below um, some of those good players there. Luke McDonald is a good player. Again, sort of on that shade level of, uh, you know, being a good, reliable senior player for Mel uh, North Melbourne, rather. Never really reached the heights of being genuine gun. I think that's about right. I've got a feeling I'm going to mix around genuine gun and top tier here, but we'll, we'll get to that shortly. Nathan Freeman barely got on the park. Again, I think his hamstrings killed him and then he played in the VFL and um, has become a good VFL player. So yeah, average. Ben Lennon as well, average. Uh, I think he played 21 games, but uh, yeah, from a first round draft pick, you're kind of going to be gifted 20 games anyway and uh, never really made his mark at AFL level. Luke Dunstan moves into decent because he's been of a journeyman. He's accumulated a bit of a career there. Uh, well, we did at St Kilda and then he went to Melbourne and couldn't get a game. Um, I think he's kind of faded into obscurity. Um, very good ball winner, but not a great ball user. A bit slow. And despite starting his career well, I think decent is about right. I think I am going to shift around some of these players. I'm going to move Merritt down from top tier into genuine gun because I think Bont, Cripps, and Sicily, as this has taken shape, are on their own level. And I'm going to put a couple of players into genuine gun alongside them. So I'm going to put Aaliyah Aaliyah, who was uh, you know at his prime. It, it took him a while to come on, but when he went to Port Adelaide, he became you know the, the best defender in the league temporarily. And Tom Barras, I would put as a very similar level to that. And I don't have him quite on that top tier bracket, but that is still a very strong, genuine gun thing. And now I'm thinking Pierce actually is the odd one out. Does he move down to good? I'll contemplate that as we keep moving through players. Josh Kelly is another genuine gun. Again, not really on the Crips or Bont level. It looked at times he's threatened to hit that level, but he isn't as decorated as those players. And therefore, uh, for me, falls into genuine gun. Tom Boyd is well, probably decent. I don't think he played long enough at a high enough level to be good, to be honest. He's a premiership player and a premiership hero. But unlike Dom Sheed, he didn't accumulate enough, you know, recognition, well he certainly had recognition, but he didn't consistently perform uh, at either GWS, well he only played one year at GWS, what am I saying? At the Bulldogs, he was under a lot of criticism, former number one pick, a little bit of undue pressure there, but retired early and you know, we had some good memories of Tom Boyd there, but uh, he's not a good player. He probably could have become one if he'd stayed long enough. Billings, I'd probably put in good as well. Um, on his day, a dynamic half forward midfielder, um, but again, never really pushed the heights of being genuine gun. I think there's a clear separation there. This is uh, Matt Scharenberg, who played 41 games for Collingwood, another player who was ruined by injury. 
Um, but how many games did we decide is going to be decent or average? I think I'm going to put him in average, to be honest. Because uh, he just didn't really... I don't recall a time where Sharon Berger was a lock in Collingwood's best 22. And 41 games, eh, let's call it 50. Arbitrarily, I'm saying 50 games. How many games did Cade Collar Jasney play? According to Wikipedia, Cade Collar Jasney played 80 games. So, yeah, I'm arbitrarily saying it's 50 games. Um, Sharon Berg just didn't quite cut the mustard, but again, injury played its part there. Nan Curvis, what do we think of Nan Curvis? I'd say he's good. He's never really been in the top bracket of rucks, like even in the top four, I think. He's still a good player, though. He's been a consistent player for Richmond and a key player as well. But I think he is the clear bracket down from guys like Kelly, Barras, Aaliyah, Merritt, and Salem. Alex Pierce. now I'm thinking about, though. On talent, I think Alex Pierce deserves to be in there. Um, you know what? I'll stick fat because I was going to make the case he's not as decorated but neither are really Tom Barras, Josh Kelly, or Zach Merritt. We just know them to be good players. And I think Alex Pierce is as good as that. But there you go, guys. That is my brackets. I have three top-tier players from this con- uh, from this draft, and that's Bont, Cripps, and Sicily. Uh, the genuine guns are Alex Pierce, Salem, Merritt, Aaliyah, Barras, and Kelly. I just have them you know, below. I think that's fair. There's a whole heap of good players here in Sheed, Zach Jones, Razio, McStay, Aish, Akers, McDonald, Billings, and Nankervis. Decent players who were, you know, made a little bit of a name for themselves at AFL level were McCarthy, Darcy Lang, Cade Collajasny, Luke Dunstan, and Tom Boyd. Five players in uh, Apness, Leslie, Freeman, Lennon and Sharon Berg, who didn't quite make a career of themselves. So there you have it, guys. That is my ranking of the uh, 2013 draft, one of my favorite drafts. And generally what will dictate what's my favorite draft is how West Coast did in it. And I was pretty happy with Sheed and Barass. Um, so let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. Um, I think the good tier is where people will probably disagree with the most. But as always, I welcome your opinions. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.